player coming up. I'm about to die. Guess what, buddy? You're dead, buddy. He died, too. Got him, too. Hold on. I'm about to pick you up. Yeah. Can't this make twice I picked you up? <laughs> Fine if they're coming in. Yep. Oh no, we can't blank him. Got one. You got you or what? Uh, there's a player come up behind us. I'm come up behind him now. Got it. We out here, boys. What's up guys and gals and welcome back to another Division 2 build video. If you happen to be new to the channel or you're just enjoying the content, then be sure to ground and pound that like and subscribe button and reach up there, trigger the bell, and turn on post notifications so that way you never miss a live stream or a video that is uploaded. Well, it's been kind of one of these kind of days, my fellow agents. I'm like flabbergasted at, just for an example, um, they'll actually be content creators that'll actually be streaming, you know, PvP content. And using this build, while in turn the whole entire time doing nothing but crying, complaining, and more or less stating that everybody that they're fighting is using the cheesiest of cheese when it comes to PvP in the Dark Zone. They even go as far as taking absolute nothing but skill to make this particular build and it not even be done right. And then you'll have some that'll actually put it on their thumbnail, done right, and it's still half-ass backwards. Now, I haven't ran this build in over three months. I called it before it was even a thing. It was a 397 back then, and even called it three months ago, you can go back and check the video footage, uh, that it was actually gonna be the meta and be the new thing. And it is particularly the easiest build to make in the division. And really, it needs a lot of tweaks because this is basically all that you see. And also keep that in mind, this is just pieces from all the other builds that I have that I just threw together to show you exactly how easy it is. It, yes, 3.11.7, 3.12.7, whatever you wanna call it. Basically, all you need is a lot of Heligard piece and then whatever particular brand set, such as in this case, a Fenris, to throw on there so that way you get that additional weapon damage. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. They'll actually be using a build such as this along the same lines 
and be complaining about other people using cheesier things in their opinion but yet they're using builds like this because it is literally a crutch and the easiest thing to use I'm just saying because now that the pults and on the ropes overlap so you get that 45 percent damage and 20 percent of it will be multiplicative and i'll demonstrate in a moment that you actually get seven seconds of overlapping which is completely ridiculous but yet this is not considered cheese in their opinion just what everybody else is using is their cheese you will see bloodsucker on the rope spotter different variations or some people don't like to use spotter they'll actually go with like a double heel type method um such as like the the healer pokeball from you know one of the specialists and then use the chem launcher on top of that some of you actually drones different combinations but still the same kind of concept but this will be the absolute cheesiest and the easiest way is it, all you need is a bunch of Heligard. Heligard you can have in each and every slot. And that is one of the things that definitely needs to be worked out and changed in the game. For instance, for this particular build and the right process, and excuse the numbers, uh, there's a lot of other builds out there with a 450, 500k armor, that type thing. I don't run this because, you know, I, I don't like crutches. And that's not, you know, being derogatory toward anybody that uses this particular type build. It is the meta and it is the easiest thing to uh, throw together. But the proper and done right would be, you know, weapon damage on your chest, backpack, and of course your gloves. It is super easy with Hilligarb because you'll have chest pieces that'll either have two defensive and a utility or two defensive and an offensive. And that goes along with the same backpack. You'll either have Hilligarb backpacks that'll have an offensive and a defensive or a utility and a defensive. And then when it comes to mask, you can have a blue and a yellow and then a utility mod slot and same as the gloves. And then basically you just throw together uh, a particular piece uh, such as this Fenris that I have on my holster to get that 10% damage without it counting toward an offensive attribute. So that way you can stay below three or less in order to proc compensate it. And compensate is weapon damage increased by 15% when your critical hit chance is below 20. Now, in my opinion, this three or less should actually be uh, considerably lower. I think it should actually be one or less, especially if they're going to use the overlapping and uh, the pulse our spotter and on the ropes com uh, combo um and also they should uh do away with certain legos on particular brand sets because just as in division one people like to compare to division one there is no sacrifice here for what you're actually gaining and let's be quite honest with one another for a moment you can out dps someone with a build along the same lines as this even if they are specced into tons of more damage outputs, such as two offensive mod slots on their holster, offensive mod slot on their chest, offensive mod slot on their backpack and gloves. You've seen my particular builds and I have upwards to 400K armor and still stack all the additional weapon damage, but yet they can still out damage me just by the overlapping or the utilization of spottered on the ropes, which is, it should be, you know, if you're going to spec into skill power and health, then you should be able to uh, have to give up, I should say, a lot of DPS. Just like, you know, the tactician builds of old, um, if you wanted damage, then you had to rely on your pulse back then. And that gave you crit chance and crit damage. And kind of like along the same lines here, just a little different. Basically, you just get a multiplicative 20% damage from a spotter, as you can see here, to pulse targets. And then once both skills are on cooldown, then you have on the ropes that gives you an additional 25%. And also keep in mind, spotter is multiplicative damage. To help further your survivability, nine times out of 10, they're also running Bloodsucker. Bloodsucker depleting an enemy's armor adds a stack of 25% bonus armor for 10 seconds. And not just because of your bullets that removes the armor, you get a proc, but using a specialist uh, weapon such as the grenade launcher, the D50, things of that nature will also take it off and give you a proc as well, as well as skills. So if you're using something other than like say uh, spotter and you're going with a drone or a bombardier, things of that nature, and you take off their armor or you even use grenades, you still get the proc. So it's very, very easy. It only becomes a little bit more tricky in group play 
but you know it's if you're focusing all on the same one it's just a matter of who gets that last bullet that completely takes their armor off but and usually if you're outnumbered then it's easily quite easy to proc this bloodsucker multiple and multiple times and since you do have seven utilities and don't look at my skill power because this like i said this is not min max whatsoever i just choose not to use this particular type build but you can have upwards of 2k skill power plus your mod slots and be over 3k so that way you can have double hills and your chem launcher ridiculous cooldowns on your spotter and just with this alone my cooldown is 12.8 seconds the duration of the pulse is 10 seconds so that only leaves two seconds of more or less uh downtime and then that allows me over seven seconds of the overlapping of spotter and on the ropes and once you put compensated along in there with that uh, and such as things like devastating on your holster to give you additional five percent and even if you can get the right pieces it's a little harder you can go with like three piece yagi or three piece providence and get the same result now the optimal way would have to be having a alps uh, gloves here um, that would actually have a utility slot in them as well and then you can kind of mix and match different um as far as legos when it comes to like masks and holsters and mod slots and but it is very very simple and easy to come up with a, a 3117 it requires no thought skill whatsoever a little bit of rng but it's just mainly getting those legos right and instead of health um, most people opt in to like the hazard protection as you see here on the mask 43 percent hazard protection on this particular mask and then i get 20% from these gloves, so that's uh, 63, and then for having the two-piece Heligard, I get another 20, so 83% hazard protection, but the this is the most common, not, I wouldn't say really mistake, it's more or less they're giving up their health, because once all their armor is gone, then basically they're one shot in their health pool, especially if you're going against an Eagle Bear that's, you know, hitting for, for that amount, then basically you can get ding once in the head by any uh, AR and all that health you're going to be completely done and over with because everybody specs all into armor and actually leaves everything up to health but instead of that 43 percent hazard protection on my mask i'd probably rather go with like 20k health there and then probably another 15k health on uh my gloves and you kind of can see that we're going because the the most effective way is not just to have 450, 450 to 500k armor and neglect your health pool because once all your armor is gone you're pretty much toast but in this day and age it doesn't really matter because you also have that much skill power and rely on your chem launcher so if you're looking to go into the dz and there are still new people coming into the game uh they're you know small numbers but they still are if you wanted to try out the DZ, then slap together the easiest, effect, most effective build that's in the game. That's completely, I don't know, ass backwards in my opinion. Um, just to the simple effect of you can out DPS someone and really have nothing specced into offensive attributes. And you can have super really high heals and basically just drop heal pools and, uh, at your feet and then do figure eights and dance around in them. And I don't know if... Um, people out there other than me call that actually pvp but i don't call that pvp that's back to the way the division one was you see more people running around in circles dropping insta heals in their boxes more than they're actually shooting i don't really consider that pvp that's more like a lot of chicken dancing and see who can uh, get the other to uh, run out of ammo before you do right but if you're looking for something effective super easy and probably the most cheesy and that is utilizing uh, a broken system of the overlapping damage of spotter and on the ropes. And I'll show you as an example. I'm going to drop my Kim 1001, 1002, 1003. And then I have boom on the ropes. And I still have seven seconds worth of it being uh, overlapped where I'm getting the 20% multiplicative damage from spotter as well as that additional 25% from the chem launcher you want to see it once again bam 1001 1002 1003 there you go 
and that still leaves seven seconds. And if you have uh, more duration into your spotter, then you're gonna have even more uh, time of those two skills being overlapped. So if you're watching streamers, and I'm just saying this as an example, um, pretty much use Burke and a 3117 variety, and then the whole entire time they're crying and complaining about everybody else using the cheese because they're dying. That just doesn't mean that it's particularly their build. That just means they're they're using the easiest build there is to make, right? And they're using the, the benefit of broken system of those two skills overlapping to get that additional damage. But if they're still dying, then it's not the build. It is actually the person utilizing it.